start, please, by telling us how did you even get started in your area? How did that happen? Everything happened when uh, we decided to, to move to, to Diaz. At that time, it was Zaire in 1994. And uh, because I was passionate um, with great apes, chimpanzees, uh, it was terrible to see here, um, you know, chimpanzees everywhere on cell on the streets. It was just terrible. So at that time, we couldn't do a lot because, you know, we were very young. We don't have any any money. We don't have this NGO. Uh, but I know that uh, I knew that I can't buy babies because this is something you, you can't do because, you know, if you buy a baby, then they go back to the wild, they shoot the whole family in order to provide you a new baby. So it was very complicated. So the only thing we can do at that moment, it was just counting how many babies reached the town. And in 10 years, I made the evidence that at least three babies arrive in, the, in this city, which is the second largest city in the ASI. So three babies per month, uh, if you calculate an estimate of between six and eight who have been killed in the wild in order to catch the babies and all the babies who are dying, um, you know, the times they arrive to the final owner. It, it was just a disaster. In 10 years, we, we estimate that at least 5,000 um, chimpanzees have been killed in the wild just to provide uh, the market in the Bombashi. And um, so we, we started asking for help, but nobody really answered to big international NGOs, um, which is very funny because after we started Jack, uh, when all these NGOs arrived here and we make the evidence that it was the biggest trade on great tapes going on in this city, um, we make it because we confiscate babies. So it was an evidence that what we said 10 years earlier happened. To start with Jack, really, uh, in 2006, so you see, between 1994 and 2006, we took a long time uh, when somebody um, saw a baby on sale uh, in the city uh, who was attached on the bicycle. So I, I called the Wildlife Authority um, uh, because uh, and they confiscate the baby. So I was very, I was surprised, you know, to see. So here in DRC, when you confiscate an animal, um, you have to uh, put that animal in the zoo. Uh, the zoo at that time was in desperate condition. So I run to the zoo with my, uh, and we saw that baby and uh, it took uh, like three months to have the legal authorization to have the baby. Uh, so we, we removed the baby from the zoo and uh, well, my kids at that time were very young and uh, they call him Jack. And uh, well, we didn't know that that chimp in 2006 six, uh, was going to change our life forever. And in July, we have a total of five babies uh, confiscated uh, by uh, authorities. Uh, so we explain them why they have to do that. We, we push them to do it. And really, it was great to, to work with them. Um, and in July, August, we went to, to France because I am native from, from France, uh, really not on holidays, just really to, to look after some zoos in France, organization who can help us because we know what was going to happen with us, uh, with all these babies. Uh, can you imagine five babies uh, in, in, in such a little time? So we, we were based at the zoo at that moment. I don't have any NGO, nothing. We were just helping these poor babies. Uh, but as you know, this trade of exotic animals is, uh, is running by big mafias around the world and is, is um, providing a lot of money for these people. When we came back in September 2006, uh, it was terrible at five o'clock in the morning. One of our keeper called us. And uh, when I arrived there, it was just a disaster. It was smoke all around. And 
and uh, they burn uh, two chimps, they kill them, uh, and Jack was one of them. Um, so it was criminal um, acts, uh, because what I just explained to you, we are disturbing this huge trade, which is giving huge money for these people, so they didn't see with a good interest seeing two expats starting uh, confiscating babies and, and making it true with the sanctuary. Um, so you can imagine it was so hard for us to, um, to lose uh, members of our families. It was just uh, terrible. And uh, so at that time, we were very worried for our kids. I have to be sincere. Uh, because we were worried that, you know, next time they will attack us and kill our kids. So we, with my wife, we decide, uh, uh, because free babies survive, so we couldn't uh, abandon them. And uh, we decide to, 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 to continue. And uh, so with the state of DRC at that time, uh, I made uh, an option for them to say, well, I need to build a sanctuary, a proper sanctuary for, for these animals. We can't put them in the zoo. Um, so it was very hard times for us because here authorities regarding wildlife are very strict. And uh, so it was very complicated. But thanks God, we, 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 we have a, an, an incredible person who helped us. And um, a big part of the zoo was completely abandoned at, at that time. And uh, we decide to make a partnership with wildlife authorities and Ministry of Environment saying, well, guys, look, there is a huge trade go going on in this city. We will stop with the trade with you, working with you, and uh, we need that land uh, in order to, to set up the sanctuary. And this is how really everything started. Uh, and in October 2006, so yes, legally 15, 16 years ago, we, we create Legally Jack. So of course, you imagine why we called organization Jack in honor of this baby who was just uh, uh, assassinated. And, uh, and then we become recognized uh, by, by the nationally, uh, we have the honor to receive the president of DRC twice. So we become very, uh, uh, no. famous, known very quickly. Uh, very earlier, we, we, we have been helped when, when the fire happened with PASA, uh, the Pan-African Sanctuary Alliance. This is where are we get in contact with them. So in a few years, we become a member. Um, because what, what, what I forget to say, which is very important, why you have this huge trade going on in Lugan? Mm -hmm. Of course, it was for local demand for pets, for expats. And this is very sad. And, and if I have to say something for every expat who is living in Africa, in South America, in Asia, never buy a wild animal, you know. is not a pet, uh, is growing very quickly, is, is aggressive most of the time, and they are not cute. Uh, so please never buy an animal in, the, in, in where you are in, in the world. But the main reason why the trade was so important in this city, if you look on the map, we are one hour from the border from Zambia, which is giving the exit for to South Africa and then the rest of the world, uh, China, Middle East, Russia. Uh, this is where all the, the great apes are going today. And uh, so this is why you have this big trade going on. So at the beginning, it was very hard we have confiscating many babies. One month, we confiscate nine babies in one month. I have babies everywhere in my house, in my bathroom, in my uh, bedrooms of my, it was just crazy. And, uh, but what was very important is that um, without pretension, uh, we are the only place in Africa, I mean, the only, Sanctuary Rehabilitation Center, where we definitely stopped the trade uh, in Lubumbashi. 
And remember, is the bigger it was the biggest trade for chimpanzees at that time. So thanks with the very good collaboration with Ministry of Environment, uh, confiscating animals, uh, people become scared, uh, became scared about what we were doing, losing their money, the chimp, and um, so it was. It, it is a success for 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 wildlife conservation, you know. Because as soon as we don't have any more babies, it means, you know, they are stopping the shooting in the wild of a whole family. Of course, the is a huge country. So we know that, of course, these people are very organized. So they are, dif they are using different routes and, uh, and different, uh, you know, options. Uh, but at least in this city, uh, we, we completely stopped the trade. Um, but the problem is still very big because DRC is, is a huge country, you know, it's the yeah. second largest country in Africa. And uh, now we are helping other cities. Um, so today, for example, we, are, we have three babies um, waiting to come to, to Jack, coming from different provinces. Uh, uh, so the problem is, is huge, you know. People believe that it's impossible to bring a gorilla, a bonobo, or a chimpanzee, or, or an orangutan into a country. But believe me, it has never been uh, so big now, because unfortunately, these animals are becoming rare and rare, and, and the price is increasing. And, uh, and this mafia, they, they, they don't, you know, they know the, the failures of each country uh, where you can do what you want. But the problem is that, you know, for Europe, United States and uh, other countries like this is okay. It is, is not any more possible to enter with the great apes. But in China today, you know, they, they want to, to build thousands of zoos. Yeah. Uh, they want wildlife for all over the planet. And, I'm, I'm sorry to say that these zoos have not the criteria uh, to receive uh, such animals. They, they use them like pets. Uh, with, uh, uh, so, so, so it's a disaster just to see how China is, is, is shooting all kinds of wildlife in Africa, not only elephants, pangolins, rhinos. But, and you know what is, is going to be a disaster because in Europe, in United States, today, look, you have plenty of sanctuaries for chips in US because the people, they don't know what to do with chips yeah. uh, when, when they are adults. So what I, what I want to say that humanity, if we speak like this, humanity is not learning about the mistakes. Uh, so we should stop you know, shooting the last remaining population of chimpanzees in Africa. It's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that because it's incredibly sad to think that in America, there are still some states that are legal to own primates and that shouldn't even exist anymore. And, and we're talking about a country that should already know better and that you think, okay, has laws in place but in some cases, there is no protection for some of these animals. I'm very interested in hearing a little bit more about what you were saying about the, the mafia and this trade, because I really want people to understand what the illegal pet trade is, that it's not just the person who is confiscating the animal or taking the animal in the wild. It's it's the middleman. It's the person at the very end. How do you think we can stop the illegal pet trade? What are your thoughts on that? Some people in this in, in this world I bec are, are becoming rich and rich, and they, they just want to own something. And um, it's just a fashion sometimes. So there is a lot of education. For me, education uh, is is the key uh, in the in Africa, but also outside Africa. Well, when they made that survey for ivory problems in, in China, and, and you see that 70% of Chinese, they don't think you have to shoot an, an elephant to remove his tax. 
uh, they believe that the animal just give you the task and, and you don't have to, to kill to shoot the elephant. This is crazy. But the problem is that education is taking time, yeah. a lot of time, and we don't have time. You know, experts all around the world are unanim in the next 15, 20 years, all great apes will be gone with all of the kind of wildlife with all the forest. And believe me, being here in this country now for, for nearly 28 years, it's just shocking to see how they are destroying the forests, cutting trees, the bushmeat trade. And last year, you know, we, we were the we made the, the, the biggest repatriation of primates forever for, for Africa. I, I, I'm sure you heard about that story, uh, people smuggling 30 yeah. primates uh, outside the DRCs, and they were stuck in Zimbabwe. So, you know, how a full truck with 30 primates can cross whole Zambia, yeah. going out of DRC, reaching Zimbabwe, thanks God the authorities stopped the truck because the truck was smelling bad. Of course, five monkeys died already. And going to, to South Africa and to China. So, so, you know, it is so much, too much corruption, of course, is the, is a, this is a very big problem. So, so it's a lot, a, a lot, a lot of things. Uh, laws exist and they are very strong, you know, but nobody is, is, is not, you know, when we catch a baby here with authorities, the guy, the owner, is not uh, receiving any fine. He's not even wow. putting in jail. Wow. I think the day, the day they start doing that, well, you will think it twice. Yeah. You know, th these people in Zimbabwe, uh, they were smuggling. So you have two Congolese and one Malawi citizen. Uh, you know, they were smuggling 30 apes, uh, sorry, monkeys. Uh, and it seems that they were doing that many times. Mm. You know, they were, put, they, they, they were in jail for six months. And, and we know they are out. And well, they will start again. So yeah. I think if we want the, the trade, you know, to finish, uh, I think the countries have to punish, you know, you have to put somebody forever in jail yeah. if you, you do such trade, you know. Protection in the wild is not working. So we need, you know, a big, uh, at the big level to be more together, more active, more proactive, because there is an end. And if you see in Kinshasa, the boats coming all the way down from, from Kisangani, Bandaka to the city with the bushmeat on board, you will not believe that what you are going to see is tons and tons of bushmeat, every kind of wildlife. So ah, th there is an end, you know, and the day it will be finished is going to be too late. Your message needs to be heard by more people obviously. And we need, I, I agree with you, uh, a, a greater amount of organizations and governments need to do more. The laws have to be stricter. Some countries are trying to do something, but at the same time, just not enough is being done. What happens to the chimps in your care? And if you do have any stories about how you have rehabilitated some of them in the wild, I would love to hear about that. That's a story that we want to tell. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, today we have uh, 30, 36 chimpanzees and 38 uh, small primates. And um, when, um, when a chimp arrives, uh, they are usually very small. So we absolutely need to provide love. Love is a main thing, and of course, all the vet care uh, and good food and milk and so far. If the animal, the animal actually, the baby is really traumatized because it has been taken away from the mom, uh, taken by poachers and not fed properly, just abandoned. It's like a child. If you do not provide care, it can, a chimp can let himself or herself die because of loneliness. So. When we get chimpanzees, very young ones, um, I usually take them myself. So we, I have um, a sur we have surrogate moms 
um, during the day and I take them over at night, for example, and they stay with me at night um, as long as they need it. Um, Sanya was a baby that we confiscated in um, at the border of Zambia because she was um, meant to be uh, driven to South Africa and then probably to China. And um, the Sanya is the, the only chimpanzee um, that we received um, who never showed any feelings. I mean, she was uh, completely lost, completely traumatized. Uh, of course, she was dehydrated and not and very skinny because she hadn't been fed properly. And um, but she was um, if, if you show her some food, things that chimpanzees do usually love, like peanuts or bananas, she just stared at the food and even never touched it, that didn't touch it. I had to put the food in her mouth because, yes, she, she was going to die and it was not the it was not my objective. I wanted her to survive. So I did all I could with uh, the surrogate mom. So I took her at my house where she could be uh, monitored uh, 24 hours a day. So she stayed during the day with uh, Mama Angeline, who is the surrogate mom we have. And, uh, and at night she stayed with me. I slept with her and just to contact. All right, of course, she had all the vet care she needed, the vitamins, um, and the good food, and uh, yes, the appropriate care. But my experience is that and when babies arrive that have been taken from their moms, um, they need love. They need contact, they need to be, to find trust in someone again. And um, with Sanya, it was really, really important because I knew um, that she could let herself die. A few months later, we um, we took in a, an adult female of about 19 years old, and she uh, was kept for years as a pet. And the owners had gone back to Europe, leaving the animal, uh, okay, with food mm. and care. But yeah, you know, these animals, you... Uh, you must take care of them. You can talk to them. They understand. They are like they are very social animals. So that female um, had been a pet for years and then completely abandoned. So in our minds, it was clear that that old female needed contact, needed love, of course from us, but also from her species. So, and 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 that baby chimpanzee needed a mom. So we did everything we could to put them together and it was like oh i've got goosebumps it was like it was wonderful <laughs> it, it was it it was the first time we did such experience because you know you never know uh, adult chimpanzees how they react especially when they go you know um, experience like being a pet and being abandoned they can be jealous or aggressive and things like that but with Sanya she was just like a mom and Sanya she needed a mom of course I was with her through all these years I, I have always treated these uh, chimpanzees like my own children but the day they are strong enough to go to their own kind well of course I cry a lot and my heart is bleeding but they my mission is to put them in a group so that they live together and that they share their own experience. We had, for example, one chimpanzee from Kisangani. His name is Tommy. And I've got this belt here next to me because 
each time we confiscate an animal, we, if we can keep something from them when they arrive. This is a belt and baby Tommy had that belt around his hips and he had grown, but the belt had remained stuck at one stage. So with the movement, uh, Tommy had, um, the skin was open. It was an open wound full of infection. So when we got that baby, um, when we got that baby, he actually uh, had his hips completely open and, and we had to clean them. And he had had a pellet gone through his uh, left arm um, because when they, when they kill the mother, it often happens that some pellets go hit or hurt the babies. And baby Tommy had a pellet in his left arm. And um, we actually had the, 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 first, the first vet, I, uh, because we didn't have a vet at that time. And the first person I contacted told me we had to amputate him. And I said to myself, if we amputate a chimpanzee, I mean, he, won't know, he will no longer be a chimpanzee because chimpanzees, they need their arms to climb, to play the trees and things like that. So um, I called um, a human surgeon and um, he agreed to have a look at the chimp. And uh, because he had already a bone infection and um, the surgeon said, listen, I come with my team my tools and my experience and for free i will save that arm and i will save that baby so the surgery yes we didn't have a clinic at that time and uh, the surgery lasted uh, a few hours and uh, tommy's arm was saved again so today he's among the big boys we have and he's a victory against all that poaching I'm so moved. There's feelings everywhere going on. Just anger at the carelessness of humans. And then just the beautiful story that you're describing, how you saved them. And, and the story of Sonia is amazing. What can people do to help? What do you want people to know about Jack's sanctuary? And how can people help you? So, of course, since we started uh, Jack, uh, our main goal is to release animals back to the wild. So we, we have done a little bit, but not for primates, for pangolins, because <laughs> here also is a huge trade with pangolins, yeah. as you know, again, for China. Um, uh, monkeys, we are in the process to, to we have a, an agreement with national parks here, the two in Katanga, to release uh, two species of monkeys, uh, which are a huge trade here, a pet trade with velvet monkeys and and uh, blue monkeys. So this is going to be okay. Um, other species of monkeys, is they are living very far from where we are. Some of them are coming from border with Uganda, Central Africa, Cong French Congo. So it's a lot of different, uh, it, it's, it's going to be complicated, but we want to do it. Uh, for chimpanzees, um, uh, DRC is a good country for release. I, I mean, when I say good, comparing with other, other countries in Africa, where actually you can't release any aid because you don't have space. Exactly. Uh, you, have, you have humans everywhere. Uh, DRC, you still have huge, you know, uh, places, national parks to do so. But as you can imagine, is a... Uh, is a huge project. We are very lucky to have a, a project with, which was started many years ago in Kisangani. Uh, a Dutch man uh, wanted to create a sanctuary for chimpanzees there because uh, it's a huge of trade of killing there. Um, so we went there in January. Um, so the guy bought an island you know, 100 hectares in the middle of the forest, which is just beautiful with natural habitat for chimpanzees. Uh, so everything is there. Um, and um, he wished to, to, to give to us everything. <laughs> and so, so it's, a, it's an incredible, for us it's a, it's a dream, uh, but it's huge project, you know, we are only 
two people uh, here uh, uh, just uh, speaking to you. Um, we are working for, for free for our, our organization like you. And you know how difficult it is to find people to, to, to work with. But for this project in Kisangani, we need really uh, very big partnerships with big uh, organization uh, in order to help us to first remove some animals from the sanctuary because we have full capacity, but also because we are the only people, I think, with a few people in the country uh, uh, who can stop the trade in Kisangani. You know, we have the experience, we have the relation with the, the authorities, the state. Uh, we know a lot of things, uh, you know, how, how the trade is going on. We have partners uh, ready to help also, but you can imagine is a, is a whole project again starting there because as soon as we are going to establish the sanctuary in Kisangani, it's for sure that we are going to confiscate, you know, hundreds of animals uh, because nobody is there really to stop anything. Then when you are on the island, uh, with the forest, the natural habitat for chimpanzees. So, of course, we will need to, to build enclosures, uh, which is the, the most expensive part, you know, uh, and, and is a lot of money. You know, we are speaking yeah. about uh, half a million dollars for, for the enclosures, so it's a lot of money. But on the riverside, you have the chimpanzees, I mean, the wild ones living there. Uh, so imagine how, how for release, how wonderful it can be to to have just to cross the river and even to create a new a, a, a protected area uh, with a wildlife authority, ICCN here in the country, to create new protected areas for, for chimpanzees and having the sanctuary just in the middle of the, the river, just in front of the... So it's a, it's a, it's a real dream, you know, and uh, we are going to fight very hard to, to make it uh, happen, but... Uh, is another big challenge for us. <laughs>